let's get started. Right, hello. Um, welcome to my talk about uh, community health reporting 101. Once again, I apologise for the, the previous session, so hopefully we'll have that uh, session uh, recording of that available on the Apache Software Foundation YouTube for you to see. Right, okay, let's start. I've got to remember which screen. I've got two screens here, so I've got to make sure that I go for the right screen. Right, here we go. Uh, right, so let's start. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. So uh, here, um, I like to describe myself as a bit of a happy traveller, um, and that's because um, I'm originally from the UK. Um, I'm currently living in Sweden, and I have gone via Brussels, France, New Zealand, and uh, Czech Republic. So I've uh, luckily managed to get work and uh, travel around and see different places. So I like travelling to see uh, lots of different places and new cultures. Um, in my day job, I'm an IT project manager, so I work um, sort of bridging the gap between sort of business and also the technical teams. So a part of the stuff that I do at uh, Apache is actually sort of reflected a little bit in my day job as well. So that sort of community building. Um, I My journey in open source, uh, especially at the Apache, sort of started in, in 2008. Um, when I actually uh, got involved in uh, the, one of the projects here, I, it's this one, Apache OF Biz, um, and uh, and since then I've I I haven't left. <laughs> I'm still here, so um, I've involved in a few projects. Uh, I say Apache OF Biz was the first one. Um, then I actually got involved in community development. You see, a lot of uh, the work that I've done over the last few years has been on Comdev community development project, which is sort of more around uh, all projects, all Apache projects, trying to help and provide guidance and tools for all projects. I also do a little bit of work on PonyMail, I'm mentor there, um, Apache training, also some contributions there, and also Apache Kibble. And that's one of the ones that I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today in this presentation. So that's me. Um, so let's start. And one of the first questions that people always ask, you know, you know, what is community health? What does it mean? You know, so you hear it, yeah, community and health, what does that mean? And it can be really difficult to describe because when you're talking to a person, if you talk to a person, you say, you know, are you feeling healthy? They'll either say, you know, yes or no. And if, they, if they're not feeling healthy, they'll tell you the reason why. They'll say, oh, you know, I've got a headache or I've got a stomach ache or I don't feel so well today. So they can actually find some symptoms or reasons why they're not feeling healthy. But, you know, so this is what, how you know you're healthy. But if you're talking about an open source community, you know, how do you... How, how do you go around and ask them each, you know, how are you feeling today? How are you feeling today? How are you feeling today? And if you've got a large community, that can take a long time. Um, and also as well, you may not get a very, very, uh, an answer that you can use. You know, some people will be feeling well, some people will not feeling so well. So how do you find that balance? How do you have something that you can sort of use to sort of measure and understand what's happening? So, like I said before, you know, if you when people ask the question, are you healthy? It's usually you people think, you know, yes or no. It's yes isn't enough as a as a as an answer to the question. So what why do we need to understand if a community is healthy? Because you think, oh, you know, hey, you know, if we're doing the stuff that communities do, you know, coding, discussing, you know, getting on, making releases then why do we need to even think about this healthy thing, you know? Um, and why do, we need, why do we need to worry about it? So one of the things here is that with Apache, one of the things that we, we do is we report um, community health. And, and so why do we need to do that? Um, and, and that's because all the Apache projects ha have to report quarterly to the board. And as part of that reporting, they need to include uh, some community health. So what I've done here is this, I don't know, not everybody will re recognize this. This is um, an extract from the reporter.apache.org tool. So 
uh, one of the things that one of the tools that we've provided as part of community development to the projects is a tool that helps them uh, report with it would help with their reporting and this re tool that you can find it at reporter.apache.org and the PMC members will have access to this tool and it creates a template for you to say right okay these are the areas that you need to report on and the areas you need to report on are things like you know hey your project activity what you've been doing um, have you in, in invited uh, or have you grown your PMC or the committers um, do you have any issues um, and the other one as well is around uh, community health so one of the things that you know we want to do really is trying to understand how we can report what's happening what this help is like in a good way and why do we want to once again report about community health because at, at apache one of the things that we were really really concerned about is around having uh, sustainable communities and sustainable means that you know the project will endure into the future and at the moment uh, you know we have you know the uh, http server from the original project from apache is still going we have projects that are 20 years old that are still going and a lot of the people in those communities are probably not the same people that were in there 20 years ago so therefore they've had a sort of like a turnover they've had this sustainability they've had the flow of new people coming in to take over and and and, and take on these new tasks so this is what i mean about the sustainable commun community and 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 to have a sustainable community, you want a healthy community to be able to encourage that. So one of the questions that we, 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 we come across a lot. So, I mean, at the moment, um, I'm, I'm uh, honoured enough to be a part of uh, the ASF board. And one of the things we do every month is we look at a lot of the, uh, we read through the, the reports that the projects submit. And I know that a lot of the projects submit details about the GitHub activity. So, you know, one of the things is that, you know, is health about GitHub activity? Because a lot of the projects, you know, they're, um, they're mirrored to GitHub or they're using GitHub repositories. Some of them are still on SF SVN, but I think most of them are on Git now. Um, but GitHub statistics tend to sort of track the, uh, the activity around particular rep repositories. So if you're not doing anything on the repository, then it doesn't get captured. So it could be that you're missing a piece of the, the what's happening in your community because you were only looking at the GitHub pieces. And also as well, this has a strong link to coding because you're talking about pull requests, you're talking about issues, you're talking about fixing problems in the code. You can also use it for documents as well if you're developing documents on your website and things like that. But mainly it's the brand trying to do something with code. So one of the things we see a lot is that, you know, people talk about, hey, we, you know, our GitHub activity is increasing or the numbers is increasing. We've had all these views and all these stars and it's increasing. You know, so the numbers, numbers tend to, you know, go up and down. And just because they go up may not necessarily mean that you're healthy. And just because they go down also as well doesn't mean that you're unhealthy. So this is this is the, the, the point that I was just hi highlighting there is that, you know, you can have a lower activity level and still be healthy and you could be super super active but maybe not so healthy so it's trying to understand what the numbers mean and trying to find a balance in 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 understanding this so this is a uh, you know github so one of the things that we another tool this is from uh, community development and it, it, I asked the question, is health about this cheese score? And some of you also, again, may be a bit confused as to what this means. So one of the things that we do, as I say, in the reporter.apache.org tool is that we have some uh, basic data. And so what I've done here is pull out the, the data for uh, community development. And you can see that here there's a uh, you know, details of the project and, and who's the chair and when you need to report and, and when your report's next year. But it also includes this thing here. It says, you know, community health score, this G score. And it, and it says, you know, 9.19. Wow, healthy. Um, and so, so sometimes projects look at this or the people are looking at this, right, okay, this score 
this number is saying that we're healthy. So therefore, in the report, we're healthy. Um, and so this T-score itself, you know, let's, let's take a deeper look at what it is. So it ranges from sort of like plus 10 to minus 10. And it's actually based on a, on a few different criteria. So where before we were talking about, I'm saying, we talk about the, the sort of GitHub activity. It's looking at, you know, the activity on the repo or the pull requests and stuff like that um, and issues. Now, this one is, crea is created using a different, some different criteria. So it looks at, you know, hey, you know, have you done any releases? Has the project done any releases in, in the last, you know, so, so much time? And, and community development actually doesn't do any releases. So we probably score quite low there. But it talks about, you know, the mailing list, because this is an in integral part of, of Apache Project, is the mailing list, the source of truth. If it didn't happen on the list, it didn't happen. So all the discussions, all the decisions, everything that we, we do should be on the mailing list. So it looks at the, the, the traffic on the mailing list to see if things are happening there. It looks at whether or not you've um, uh, in expanded the, the committers or the PMC, because once again, this recognition of merit, you know, people doing things on the project, have you recognized anybody recently for doing work on the project? You know, ha, you know and, and, and these are some of the things that it's trying to capture in this number. So this number isn't just, a, you know, hey, right, random one to 10. It's sort of saying, right, hey, let's look at the percentage of your, your mailing list. Are you, are you talking? Are you recognizing people? Um, and and, and or are you actually releasing code? So this number is a composi composition of all of these different factors. So it's trying to tell us a few different things in one number. So, but once again, the, the, the number itself doesn't capture the full context. So if on the report I put 9.19 super healthy or healthy, then that doesn't actually tell me anything. It doesn't tell me anything about, you know, what is the thing that's that's pushing that number up? Is it the, is it the fact that we're talking a lot? Is it the fact that we're... we're um, we've got a new whole load of new committers. Is it because we've done a whole load of releases? It doesn't give me the context. So now I go round to Apache Kibble. So what is Apache Kibble? Um, as, as well as looking like dog food. As I said, this is our, the logo. Um, but essentially what it does, it sort of collects and sort of consolidates and aggregates information around project activity so and he also visualizes it and i know that we're talking about you know uh, the project itself is talking about maybe you know, hey maybe our visualizations is a bit sort of outdated so maybe we need to go and talk to the superset project to sort of see whether or not they can help us or how we can maybe look at integrating maybe their software into 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 kibble so that, but that's another conversation so but anyway so at the moment it collects aggregates and visualizes project uh, data and, and it's not perfect. It's something that's like a work in progress. So we've had like a, an initial um, code, uh, sort of code base. Um, and one of the things that we were looking at is that saying, hey, right, I think we might need to start again. And this is something, this is the journey that we're on at the moment. So it's not perfect. It's still in development. There's things that, that don't work, but that's the, that's the nature of development, I suppose. Um, but it's a start. Um, and so it, one of the things that's really interesting, I think, is that it has some metrics and some numbers that can give you another view of the project. And it's looking at uh, different things. So not just the, the coding activity, it's looking, giving you a, a, a different view. And I think um, I'll do a demonstration as part of this uh, presentation uh, to take you through and, and show you what I mean by these different views. So, so let's let's go and take a look. So hopefully I'll be able to share my screen and show you. So I'll take you through, hopefully fairly slowly, um, the sort of interface and what we can use it for. So let me just, I'll just stop sharing this and I'll share uh, Kibble. So hold on a moment. I'm gonna move my screen about, my, my cursor back onto my other screen. So back in a moment. Right, so let's share again. So let's see how this works. Right, so hopefully you can see my screen. The thing now is that I, you, if you can see my screen, let me just pop back because I can't see you, but I can see my screen. So I just need to check that you guys can see the screen as well. So just hold on a moment. 
right that looks good okay then so you, yeah okay so i'll go back to the other screen right and i'll do I'll, I'll carry through here if you've got any questions please either pop them in the chat or in the q a tab at the top um and we can run through them later okay so i'll keep an eye on the clock as well that i don't try not to overrun too much okay here we go right okay so um this is the main page for apache kibble um, and across the top, you can see our main menu options and you can, it gives us some details about the project, who the people are and how to get in touch. So the, the lists, um, so you can sub subscribe or browse those details as well. Um, if you, what we have got on here is we have what uh, across the top is a live demo. So effectively you could actually go in and actually try out Kibble for yourself. So let me just click on this live demo. So you, you come here, so you can sign in. And what we have, we have a, a guest login that you can use and it, the details and the, the user ID and the, and the password is here. So guest at kibble.dev and, kib, and kibble demo here. So I got here, kibble demo, oops, demo, hopefully that should be it. Right, okay, and that will take you in. And so if you, you know, you can, any, anybody that's on this call um, on this presentation can go in and do exactly the same that I'm doing now on the live demo. So it's open, people can have a look. So um, just some initial um, sort of orientation. So across the top, we have some, some menu options. So organization, data points, engagement, contributors, relationships. And then we also have some uh, menu options down the side as well. And one of the things that you'll find is as you click these things across here, it will actually change the menu options down the side so just be aware of that it's not so not that there's one one uh, side menu it, it, it actually uh, will change sort of dynamically um so that's that so if we start here at organization level and what we have here is all of the projects that are in apache we have their details loaded in here so we can see that it's it's collected 56 is a million objects from 4,199 sources. So every day we pull in all the information that we can from all the Apache projects. And that includes the incubating ones. So if you're a new project, um, or if you find that your project isn't in Kibble, then please post a message on the Kibble mailing list and we will add you. So we will add all the projects. So um, let me, I'll first take you, take you through the sources. So this is a, uh, here, so we click on sources. So sources here are all the, the, the I would call it the, the channels where we actually get information uh, into Kibble. So you can see that we pull a lot of things from GitHub. Uh, a lot of the projects have Jira, so we pull in from Jira. There's some people have some Jenkins jobs, uh, a pony mail. So we pull in a lot of stuff from our, um, our the uh, mailing list as well. And across here, there are different types of sources that we can support. So at the moment, we've sort of tailored mainly towards uh, Apache, but I know that we've had um, required, you know, suggestions to include other sources as well. So these are the, the ones that we support so far, but we're willing to, you know, add some new ones as, as the project goes. So you can see that um, it, there's a job that runs every day where it will, it will actually synchronize all the sources. Some of the sources don't synchronize and they, it tells us why. So we need to go and investigate that. But for the whole part, main part, um, we have a successful load for of, uh, the projects. So without getting into too much detail, I think the key part would, which would be interesting for you is around these views. So sources, that's something that we can set up. Um, views is something that you can set up. So um, here on the views, now, what we have, so this is a test version. So these are people that have come in here and, and, and created these views. So what we do with these views, they what they do is they aggregate some sources together. So for example, if you only wanted to look at Cassandra, then you could just select the Cassandra sources and it would give you a view over that. If you wanted to create a view over, uh, I don't know, let's, let's uh, try a, a project. Um, um, who can I think of as a project? Uh, I don't know, a beam, Apache beam. So you, we have a filter select, just type in the name of the project here and it will pull in all the sources that it has. And then if you want to save it, you can just call it, you know, uh, Sharon beam or whatever and save the view. 
So now that means that you can use that view to, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, for the statistics further along. So you can go in there, create your project or create the view for your project um, and then use it later on in Fribble. So you can see that there's some things already people have gone in and, and created things. So Tomcat, Cassandra, CouchDB, Pulsar, Airflow, OFBiz. So these, are, these projects have already been created and there's the one that I've just created now, Sharon Beam, you know, 11 sources. And you, if you want to just delete it or if you want to edit it, you can just go in here and change change the sources that were there. And here, you can remove uh, or add whichever sources you need. But at the moment, it's just OK. So we've created a new view. So that's here. The next thing that I'd like to show you is around the data points here. So we're going to move along the top bar here and move to data points. And by default, what Kibble will do is it will pull in everything. So you can see over in this side here, it says all 2,228 repositories. So this is everything that it's, it, that it's pulled in. Um, as a default, it pulls in the last six months as well. And it gives you some sort of trend between this six months and the previous six months. So I think the, the detail at this level is a bit too much. There's a lot of, too much information. So this is where your view can become really interesting. So like here, you know, the, the view that I created, where was it? Sharon Beam, here we go. Here, now, all the ones that, all the ones that are linked to Apache Beam, this is the, uh, the view of Apache Beam. So it gives us details of uh, the, the commit trends, the number of authors, how many commits they've had, um, and also gives you details of what the, the language breakdown for the project is, um, what the, uh, the code, the comments and the blanks. So this, this, this page that is being shown is actually related to this one, this code repositories. So this is around the code. And you can see here also as well, whether or not, or what time of day the commits the, or the work is happening. So it gives you an idea as to, you know, whether or not a lot of the work is going in during the, you know, Monday to Friday. Is it nine to five? Is it in the evening? Is it over the weekend? So just a, a different view as, you know, when is the most of the work happening on the project? Um, it also gives you details of things like the commit history, you know, so you can see when you had the peaks and when you have any dips, it gives you some details of the developers and the authors that are active for month, the lines that are changed, um, this ratio of code to comments to blanks, um, and also as well, some details of the, the, the repos that they have. So it looks like they have a few repos that are beam related, so including the website. So it tells you things like that. And it also gives you details of what we call the pony factor. And I think the pony factor just seems like a really complicated um, uh, thing to, 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 to try and describe. But uh, let me try and just do it in a try a simple way. It's trying to capture, you know, whether or not the project is built on one, two or three people that it's dependent on. And, and essentially what you want is, you know, to the pony factor to be higher because if you have a low pony factor, if that person or group of people leave the project, does it mean that the project is going to suffer or, 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 or um, go to the attic or close down or will work stop? So what you're looking for is not to have a project centered around one, two or three people. You want it centered around more people so that it will be sustainable in the future. So six, I think, is, is, a, is, is, is not too bad for a, a pony factor here. Um, and what it does as well, as I say, it compares it with the previous uh, period. So the previous six months, it thinks the pony factor was higher. So in the last year, this has gone down a little. This is being so. Um, so this is this is the code repository. It will also look at the issue trackers as well. So here, um, a similar sort of screen where you have the details of the issues that are open and closed. You know, and and if the fact that you know, are you closing them them, I, or are, are is it that people are just opening and opening and opening and nothing's getting closed. Um, also gives you some details about the age of the issue. You know, how, are you actually uh, have you got issues that have been around for a long time? Do you need to do some cleanup? 
And then um, it does uh, something that you feel quite interesting. I think mean, in these in this in this case, I think it's 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 not so intuitive, but um, it gives you details of the people that are opening issues, the top five people that are opening the issues, and the top five people that are closing the issues. And in this case, it looks like there's there's a couple of people that are opening and closing or fixing them as well. So, um, but generally, you can also uh, here find the people that may be not coding but helping you with. Uh, reporting of, of, of issues, so maybe your users, um, also helping you with testing of, of, of issues as well. So it's a way of being able to perhaps capture some of the people that are um, providing some sort of contribution, but not necessarily a coding one. So it's knowledge in the, in the way of uh, reporting a bug or helping fix a bug or help test a bug. It also gives you some details of, you know, um, the most active issues as well. So you can see, you know, does this correlate to, you know, we are working on a lot of stuff and this one had so many interactions and things like that. So this is quite an interesting one. Um, here, the next one along is the mailing list. So we've done the code repositories, we've done the issue tracker, and now we're doing the mailing list. And similar sort of layout again here in, in uh, that we're looking at the, the mailing list. And here we're looking again at the most active authors. And you can, here is one where we can once again, you know, try and find people that are perhaps welcoming new contributors, uh, responding to uh, people on the mailing list with their knowledge, helping share things, help organize events, uh, um, help with uh, marketing, help with promotion, all this sort of thing that isn't really reflected in the code contribution or perhaps the issue tracker as well. So once again, you've got another way of being able to try and uh, reach and understand and see, uh, you know, you, you can identify people that it come, it, they're in the community that are doing things that may not be necessarily coding based. So this is really quite quite an interesting one, I think. Um, the next one um, I was going to look at is uh, engagement. So I'm going to move across the top here. I mean. I, when I, when I was doing this, I wasn't initially going to use Beam, so I hope, hope everything's okay. I was going to use another project, but Beam's okay, so we're, we're doing this. Um, so here, um, one of the things we're doing at the moment, is, so this is the pony factor, and this was the thing that we were talking about. I think this is maybe too complex to talk about here because I think it's it it, it, it can be a bit too confusing. So let's look for the simple things that pe you, you know you can understand and also put into use uh, from day one. So this default is the pony factors, but we're going to skip over that and we're going to go to this contributor retention. So this is the second one here. So this is one of my favorites here. I really, really like this, 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 this piece here. Um, and this, what this does, it gives you an idea of what's been happening in the commu com community. And so this is, we have the retention for code base, we have it for email and we have it for the issue tracker. And what this is, it gives you a bit of an indication of the people that whether people are staying or whether people are leaving the community. So you can have a look and see, you know, you know, are people staying or are people going in, in droves or are we attracting lots of people? And, and, and also as well, the trend. So you can see as you go through, you know, the, the, the measure of you know, who's leaving, what's going, what are pe active people in the community and things like that. Um, and so this is really, I think, quite nice. Uh, to be able to have a, as a, a bit of a guideline. I mean, I say not 100% perfect, but it gives a bit of a guideline to say, right, you know, how welcoming are we? Are people staying? If, we, if we've got a good trend of people staying in the community, then we're doing something good and we need to keep doing that. If we've got a, a trend of people leaving, then we need to try and identify what are we doing that's making these people leave? Is it, you know, you know is it lack of information? Is it, you know, that we're not so welcoming? Or what is it? So that's something that's really interesting. Here, I really, really like this um, this this uh, representation here, and what this also shows. So this is about whether people are leaving and and and, and staying, but this is around um, how long people have been in the community. So you know, here we have uh, in Beam, we've got forty two, just over forty two percent that have been involved in the uh, in the code base for less than a year. We've got uh, around thirty six percent that have been in the project uh, one to two years. We've got 17% um, two to five years. And then we've got, you know, more than five years, a, a sort of a smaller percentage. And you, and this is reflected in, in all of these. So you've got these sort of, you know, this time period across all of that. 
And I think the thing that's really, really interesting here is that you see that there's a progression of people moving from new to more experienced. And that is what you want. So remember, right at the beginning, when we talked about these older projects in Apache that are like 20 years old, uh, what they, they became 20 years old and the people that are working on them today are not always, not the people, not all of them are the people that were working on them 20 years ago. And that is because these people, people came in on a regular basis and they moved through this cycle of being a newcomer to a more experienced contributor and they ended up staying. So this is part of the cycle that you want to encourage um, in, in, uh, to, to have a healthy project. So if you see, for example, that you have no newcomers coming into your project, then this is something that you need to work on. If you see, for example, um, you know, you have newcomers, but no older, you know, people that experienced people in, in the project, that also may cause some problems as people try and gain that experience if they don't have any mentors to gain that from. So these three show you the programmers, the, the code base, the email, uh, activity as well and also the issue experience as well so people how many people have been involved in the issue trackers as well what you find with issue tracker and it's not so much so so clearly evident in this case is that you tend to find that sometimes that people will create an issue as a one-off to fix a problem that they have in their in their work so you tend to find that the, the people that are creating issues seems to be a lot bigger than the people that are staying around to help resolve the issues. And that's normal because I say, you know, people might create one issue to fix, fix a particular bug that they have with uh, their work. And then once it's fixed, they, they, they disappear, they go off, they, they're happy. Um, but then there's others that will create issue and come and stay and, 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 and whatever. So that's just something to be aware of just a, a, a generally. So that's, that's what, one of the things on, on, on engagement. Um, that, so that was contributor retention. Another area that's really, really interesting, I thought here is is communicate community growth, because this is also once again this thing about you know how do we get new contributors, and one of the things that we can show see here is you know new contributors. It can highlight these new contributors that have come into the community. So here we can see from from Bean, you know, okay, we've got these number of regulars, but we've got these these newcomers, and these are the newcomers that have come in, and this was their first commit. So if you wanted to somehow recognize that these people are coming in and say, hey, right, OK, ha, huh, thank you very much for your for your first commit. Congratulations or, you know, thank them or, or show that they are your appreciation for the fact that they've actually done a contribution. And it's their first one to try and reassure them, make them, you know, feel feel good about doing something. Um, and when we have this available also for the issues as well. So if you want to highlight or, or, or recognize the people that are creating the issues or the new contributors, you can also do that as well. So that's something that's available here. Now, one of the things that I think will not work for Bean, because I don't think we've, I've just created that thing, I don't think it will work for them. No, it won't. But I know a project it will work for. So we do have this communication moves here. So um, let me just change the view here because I, I know, I, as I say, I didn't, we've not done it for Bean, but I know that Tomcat has this. So this is why I'll swap over to Tomcat for this. So here, what we have, we, ha we can run a mood analysis over the mailing list and pull out the, the sentiment of, of, of the community. So you can get a feel for, you know, are people generally happy? Are they, or are they, you know, not so happy? Are they, whatever? And you can, you can, we can track that over time. So we can have a look at some of the, you know, some basic emotions. So you know, trust, surprise, neutral, sad, whatever. And we can, we can have a look at that and see what that looks like for the last six months or year or whatever. Um, and we can actually see this mood over time. And you can see some some dips in here, um, as that, that look like, you know, the the mood has gone not so great and I think we I think there's a little bug in here actually because they're all zero but we also had uh, a little bug uh, for the, for Tomcat because they came back and I said well you know on a particular day this was showing that we were really really negative on our list so they went back because one of the things that's really good about this is you can go back to the date uh, on the mailing list and say well what was happening in the mailing list of that time you know th that could have caused this emotion and one of the things that we found with them is that they were doing, they were discussing some code 
and the code had you know some not in it so like some like not integer or not whatever um and that word not was on the mood analysis as a negative so all of a sudden tomcat had a really sort of negative score because of this code code uh uh, in the in in their mailing list, so that was also something that we need to fix. So that's another little bug. So this is we thank them for the bug report. But what I'm saying here is that once again, this is a different view for you uh, for the community. So you can have a look at this and see how that how how that can work. So so I I, I think I'm I'm maybe running a bit a, a, a bit too uh, I'm running a bit late here. So I, I I'll, I'll probably um, stop. Um, sharing here now because I want to leave a little bit of time for some questions as well. But um, I hope I haven't sort of um, confused you too much about the kibble and what's available. So I hope I've given you just a little little taste of, of, of what's available. So let me just come back to the to the presentation and we can I'll I'll take some questions as well. So let me just come out of here and I'll go back. Okay, so let me just quickly share this last thing here. So here, so right. So um, so just briefly, really. Um, so one of the things that we can see, um, one of the things that I thought that you know Kibble can give you um, is some context around the numbers. So you can actually see, um, you know. You look at the numbers, but also as well, see some of the things around it that could be affecting them. You know, you know, you can have a look and see whether or not you're attracting these new contributors. You can see whether or not people are staying or leaving. Um, and you can see whether or not, you know, are we getting some of these non-coding people, you know, either via the issue tracker, via email or, or whatever. Um, and, you know, are we discussing things, coding and fixing issues as well? So in summary, you know, community health is all about understanding the big picture. It's not just a number. Um, it's not just a yes or no. It's about the big picture and understanding what's really happening in the community. And you do that by looking at the community from different perspectives. Um, you know, they say it's not only about the number. Um, and this thing, you know, you can have low activity and still be healthy. There's no reason why you should be trying to say, well, I was doing loads and loads and loads and loads. So because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not healthy. You can have low activity and be healthy. You can have high activity and be healthy and, and the inverse as well. So, you know, in the reporting, if you're a practice project and you're doing reporting, you know, include the numbers, by all means, include the numbers, but also as well, give some context, describe what these numbers mean, describe what it's telling you. Because if you understand those numbers it all, and, and also the context, it means that you understand your community better as well. So, that's my presentation today. So thank you very much as well. So I will check the, uh, the chat for any questions. So thank you very much, everybody. Right, okay. So uh, um, so I hope, hope I wasn't too quiet. <laughs> All right, can see, can read it. Okay, looks like a great tool. Right, okay, so Curtis, right. Um, yes, yeah, so one of the things that we're doing is um, at the moment, the, the kibble has been a bit quiet and we're looking to try and relaunch or try and rebuild some of the community because we haven't had so many so much um activity over the last uh months i think with, with covid and with you know the holidays and things like that so we're looking to build the community and we're looking to look at re rehashing the tool a little bit um to try and make it improve it a little bit better and i mentioned you know we were talking about maybe reaching out to the superset community as well apache superset because they have a really nice uh, graphical uh, looking interface that we could maybe look at maybe uh, integrating with uh, with kibble because our widgets are a bit old fashioned now so um, but the data is 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 there so okay uh, any other questions so i as i say i know i know that i i don't want to be uh, uh, too um, uh, don't want to overrun too much so any questions anybody Let me just have a quick look at the Q&A, see if there's anything on there. Oh, hold on, my mouse is gone. That's what it is. It's over here. <laughs> right, nothing on there. Okay. All right. 
okay if you have any questions um or if you would like to, to catch up with me then you can um you know catch me on the on the kibble um uh, development list or you can uh, resp you can uh, email me uh, my my email is uh, sharon at apache.org so you can contact me there um i'm you also find me on the community development list as well so um i'm i'm there too so uh and i'm really really keen to to sort of promote kibble because i'm i'm the current vp there so we're try trying to build a bit of community and get them some things moving so that's why i'm i'm also glad to have had the opportunity to, to, to present to you so any other any other comments or any other questions No. Okay. Right. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming along to see the talk. And uh, I hope uh, you'll stay around and see some of the uh, other com tracks at the com uh, community track here at ApacheCon. So that I think the what it oh so why didn't the senti the reason the sentiment sentiment na yeah because I I think what it, what it is is that we hadn't run the the job I think what's happened is that. That the, the sentiment analysis runs as part of the uh, as part of the the, the load, um, and I just created that, and I don't think it. There's only a few projects that it works for, so that needs a bit of debugging, I think. So yeah, so we need to dig dig into that, and I think we have, uh, but it should work for everything. It should work, but it, some of them it hasn't. I know that sometimes when we were looking at it before. We thought it might be to do with the number of um, the size of the mailing list or the, the amount of um, and, and the, or the amount of uh, traffic that was coming through. Did PLC 4X work then? No. Nah. OK, then. We, all right, then. So, yeah, we need to have a look at that then. OK, right, Chris. I'll, I'll if you want to fi file a file a, a, a ticket for us. <laughs> it's not only you, actually. OK, I'll make a note of that. mode all right then right thank you very much everybody okay take care